Hello friends! We continue to monitor the events on the front lines in Ukraine, Russia and the news. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and click on the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Today Russia once again launched a missile strike on Ukraine targeting the cities of Kramatorsk, Odessa and Kirovograd region. A drone hit military infrastructure resulting in casualties. However, as anticipated, this strike didn't affect the counteroffensive. And let's start right away with the direction of Vuhledar, where the Ukrainian forces have managed to make significant progress. And as of today, the Russians continue to show this direction. Yesterday there were reports of counterattacks by Russian forces, but later in the evening Russian sources provided an update on the situation there. According to them, there was no offensive activity from the Ukrainian side today. Artillery exchanges and skirmishes, which seem to have more of a reconnaissance nature, are ongoing. There are two possible explanations for the decreased activity from the Ukrainian side. The first one is that Ukraine may be exhausted, and the second one is that Ukraine is waiting for reinforcements to enhance its capabilities. While it is evident that the populated area is under the control of, of Ukraine, the counteroffensive is currently in its initial phase, which involves assessing the Russian defenses. A more powerful strike in a specific direction, determined by the general staff, is expected in the near future. It has been noted that the highest number of strikes is aimed at the areas of Staromlinivka and Hehorivka. Presumably, after the artillery preparation, the movement of troops will occur along this route. The situation in the Zaporizhia direction is similar, but the advancement of the Ukrainian armed forces was less significant and the offensive has also stalled. Currently shelling continues and on some map the populated area of Piatihatka has already transitioned into the grey zone. It is possible that new successes can be expected in this area in the near future as well. In the Kherson direction, shelling continues. The water level gradually decreases. In some villages, people are starting to return home, but most of the houses have been damaged or destroyed and are unfit for habitation. Shelling of the city and nearby towns continues in the Avdiivka direction. All villages in the vicinity of Pervomaisky are heavily bombarded. The Russians are not abandoning their plans to advance towards Karlivka, south of Marinka, in the future. Yesterday, Russian forces reported that the situation is very difficult for them, but there is no confirmation yet of an immediate counterattack. We are awaiting new information for an updated situation. In the Bakhmut direction, there are active offensive operations being conducted by the Ukrainian armed forces, as reported by both Ukraine and Russia. According to some reports, the Ukrainian armed forces have already made advances on the outskirts of the settlement in the Verkhivka area. It can be said that the settlement is now in a grey zone with uncertain control. Additionally, it is reported that the Ukrainian armed forces attempting to break through in a new direction. Continuing the advance, albeit without significant success, we observe that the flanks have been partially cut off and the movement continues gradually. It seems that the Ukrainian armed forces have decided to break through to Bakhmut from the direction of Solidar. Overall, we are hopeful for positive news. However, the occupiers aware of the imminent danger they face are actively shelling our positions. That is why there were explosions in Konstantinivka yesterday evening. In the Lugansk direction, the separatist forces are creating a false impression of an offensive that doesn't actually exist. Currently, we are observing ongoing shelling in the area of Dvorichna. Russian forces are conducting reconnaissance and launching artillery strikes on the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces and their equipment. 
In this part of the direction, the situation remains unchanged. There are no offensive actions taking place, only continued shelling. In the Krimina area, there are also shelling incidents without any offensive actions, and it appears that the situation will continue for a long time, as an entire division of Russian forces was successfully destroyed with a single HIMAR strike. In the Sirsky direction, all attacks in the area of Bilogorivka have been repelled and currently only shelling without any offensive actions is being observed. Russian media also reported that there was recently an interview with the president of Belarus where the uh, where he, I'm sorry, where he confirmed that Russian nuclear weapons are already deployed on their territory. He stated that they are ready to use it if necessary. However, it is difficult to draw a definite conclusion whether these were mere threats or pure truth. The president also mentioned significant losses suffered by Ukrainians during this counteroffensive. And believe me, the numbers he mentioned were astronomical. Наступ 4-5 числа начался. Так вот, за это время у украинцев погибло что-то под 40 тысяч. Погибло и больше 100 безвозвратно не вернутся ранены. There are two possibilities. Either the president of Belarus revealed a true secret and Ukraine suffered significant losses, losing many soldiers in just 10 days, or as often happens, someone is trying to appear knowledgeable but actually doesn't understand the situation and invents such figures. It seems that their intentions is to demonstrate their capability for nuclear blackmail to the world. This may indicate that their equipment and human resources are not sufficient to handle the situation independently. That's all. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye-bye.